Okay, well here we are. We have made it back to the McLaren uh, tent. Yeah, Goodwood Festival of Speed. We are joining the team and they're going to be giving us a, a brief uh, presentation of the all new Souls GP, the first customer car. It's Andy Palmer. He's uh, the vehicle line director of our very, very unique and special cars. One of which is the Solus, but of course, a few of which you may know, such as the Senna, for example, and many more. He's going to take you and talk to you a bit of a top line around the Solus and hand over to Andy Palmer. Well, good morning, everyone. And, and welcome to, to Goodwood. Uh, apologies about the weather. I hope this little beauty uh, makes up for it. So this is Solus, um, a bespoke car. Uh, we're building 25 of them. We've got two cars here this weekend. We've got this car, which is our first customer car. Essentially, we refer to as Job One. So what is Solus? What is the project? Started a few years ago as most of you know, in a, in a computer game. Some real cues have flowed into some of our designs over the years. The back end, particularly if you look at 570 and the way some of the fenders fitted and went together. But a few years ago, we thought about, could we ever produce a car that was a virtual car, a car that would only have really been seen in, our, in, in games? And we said, well, of course, let's give it a go. And, and this is essentially the car. 25 were being manufactured and they'll be starting to be built over the next few months and we'll deliver those into uh, in this year and into next year. High level numbers, over a tonne and a half of downforce, uh, 840 PS, weighs less than a thousand kilos, um, speed probably not that relevant, over 200 mile an hour, acceleration uh, two and a bit seconds to 60. But what really this car is about is about grip, is about downforce, and as close as we feel we can get to a Formula One experience without being Lando or Oscar. We've got a halo in the car, so the center beam that you're seeing in there clearly, like Formula One, adds to safety. Driving the car, actually, it doesn't distract you from the driving experience at all. The way your eyes work and the vision that goes around, you actually don't see the central spar. It obviously provides support in the event of a rollover or in the event of a, uh, an accident. We do have an escape hatch, so the top roof comes off, um, either from the outside or the driver can pull the handle and, and punch out if he or she wanted. I suppose like the cars we've done in the past, ultimate cars, a level of bespoke. This gentleman uh, chose this colour. Obviously it's a full carbon car, but the level of detail, the level of attention flows into the interior as well. So let's talk a little bit about the aero. Combination of the way the air's flown over the top and underneath the car, and we really start the splitter, the way the air is divided. And we'll walk around the back in a moment and you can see essentially what makes up the underneath of the car which is two large Venturis and as we've got a central driving position we're really enabling the air to flow around the car just like in a Formula One but it'll be enabled to really transition and drive itself through under the car to give us that level of downfall. It's fixed aero, there's no active aero on this car and that decision was made primarily due to us being able to fix the ride height of the car so as it is a track car there's no need for it to go on a road so unlike Senna, P1 or, or even Speedtail, we don't need to lower the car. So essentially we've set the car up for its track work essentially as, as you see it now. That also contributes no mechanism to make it a little bit lighter as well. So we'll move around the back and we can talk a little bit about the engine and, and the drivetrain. Uh, producing 840 horsepower, it's normally aspirated, so no turbochargers. Um, air intake top of the um, top of the uh, canopy, so we're bringing the cold air in straight into the top of the engine, the air box. And if you have a look at the car down in the paddock with the engine cover off, you'll see essentially a large air box that brings the air into the top of the engine through the trumpet, through the uh, the throttle bodies, and essentially into the uh, into the heads. Weighs 140 kilos. It's our design of engine and it's 5.2 litre so obviously unlike turbocharging we're normally aspirated that the faster we go essentially the more air we're pulling in so we slightly increase the 840 or so uh, horsepower um, the quicker the car goes it's mated to a seven speed sequential uh, gearbox we're essentially 
supporting the suspension through the structural properties of the gearbox and the engine. So making it incredibly stiff, but also making it uh, a little bit lighter for us and using the properties of the engine and the transmission to stiffen the car up. The V10 normally aspirated revs to 10,500, 650 Newton meters of torque makes the V10 makes a very distinctive and, uh, and beautiful, I would say, sound. I know I'm jumping around, but you can kind of see when you have a look at the rear of the car, the Venturi's and the rear elements of the aerodynamics on the car and the way they're flowing, flowing. And if you look through the front suspension, obviously air is rushing through there. We've paid attention, just like on Formula One, with the suspension, with the wishbones, to ensure they're creating the level of aerodynamics, whether that's drag or downforce, that we, uh, that we require. The seat is purposely made. We use a company that actually makes our Formula One seats. So over the last year, the, the, the customer has been measured. So we sit them in a buck, just like we do in Formula One, make sure the support, whether it's around their hips, whether it's around their thighs or their shoulders, is as they need it. So there's an insert seat, the steering wheel fully adjustable, and the pedal box. So there's two levers on the inside, one to open the canopy, one to uh, adjust the pedal box so that the customer can set that up. The, the seat is obviously fixed and the pedals move. Four, obviously, safety system, six-point harness. We comply with the relevant FIA and uh, motorsport regulations for such a car. So we've had 15 of the 25 customers already in the car. Last November, we were in Texas at Cota Circuit of America, uh, where they got to experience the car. So it's the first time we've actually put them in a prototype. We started them in a 570 GT4, into a Senna GTR, and then moved them into this. So we were giving them experience. Gradually, gradually exactly. It's not only to learn the track, but also to understand variation on how downforce, and obviously being such a ground effect and high downforce car, um, your speed into corners and around corners is very different from say a 570, even a Senna GTR. The suspension is adjustable, we can set that up as and one and how they like to drive um, and circuit wise, etc. Particularly on the diffuser, the way the Venturi's are, this is really just to ensure that that air and the way it is established as it comes off the rear of the car uh, works, with the, works with the diffuser. Many hours in wind tunnels, so we did models on this, full size, as well as CFD. And just like all of our cars, including Artura, including 750, everything is there for a reason. It weighs 950 and the downforce is 1,500. You drive it upside down. Yeah. You can stick it upside down. <laughs> so yeah, it's an interesting theory that, driving cars upside down. Um, I'd love to be able to do that and demonstrate it, but you can trust me that uh, this does generate a lot of downfall. Thanks for ha having CGI. Well, <laughs> if, you CGI, if you look at 24 hours Le Mans running, that's probably a little bit less than 5,000 kilometers. The engine, the transmission, the components, everything is signed off to that. If it needs a rebuild, it's, it's simple and easy to do. Um, Bearing in mind the, the basis of this engine and the running we've done on it is literally 24 hours at 80-90% throttle okay. on a dyno. And we know that the average customer is not going to be at 90% throttle for 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs>
I, I feel like I'm in an absolute capsule right now. <laughs> this whole shifting mechanism, the, the paddle shifters, the feedback is insane. This is an absolute prototype race car. You can custom order for yourself. This is the closest you can get to buying your own, I think, Formula One race car. But look at this, it says past scrutineering, and uh, only 25 of these will be made worldwide. 830 horsepower, 10,500 RPM. This is truly next level. This is for race, you have track mode, what else? Okay, In so this is still the VP wheel, so the, the kind of graphics are, are, are different on the production wheel, but um, this is our you know, development wheel. What are these toggle switches for? Uh, so there are, there, are some, uh, there are some settings and parameters within this, so ABS traction control that you can adjust. Oh really? Uh, and these rotaries do that adjustment. And volume for the, for the uh, pit to driver radio, that sort of thing. This is for the rear view camera? Yep, rear view camera. Is right. Perfect. Hey, thank you very much. The process to get out, same thing. You just try to inch your way backwards and up again. Always standing on that panel. Perfect. Wow, that, that was absolutely crazy getting inside the Solus GT. That is a um, multi-million dollar race car. Coming from my point of view, this is what we do, right? We go to the racetrack. Uh, that would be next level. I know for a fact, if you got inside that vehicle, the only limitation it would have would be from the driver not being able to sustain the amount of G-forces it produces every single uh, corner. Because truthfully, even getting into a standard radical type vehicle or a prototype even formula car i used to race some um, um, open wheel formula vehicles and the, the g-forces that you sustain i mean you have to be in a very high physical state or condition to be able to go non-stop for a full session um, the beauty of it is that learning from the mclaren team they have a wide range of different uh, buyers coming into it they have professional drivers intermediate drivers even the novices and the vehicle can be uh well you can learn and drive accordingly to your skill level but of course uh it's not going to be a car that you'll find limitations of as long as you keep improving yourself as a driver, I believe you'll get faster and faster. I was just uh, stunned, stunned, blown away because it is a center seat vehicle, just like the Speedtail, the McLaren F1. Major thank you to the McLaren team for having us out to check out the Solus GT and to hear what Andy had to say from the development side of things. Please let us know in the comment section down below what do you think of this coverage. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and while you do that, hit the notification bell so you do not miss a single video. I'll see all of you in the next one.